uh, we just want to say a huge thank you to you for inviting us to be part of uh, Prayers One tonight. Um, we're just so encouraged uh, that all of you from throughout the country are gathering together, you know, to pray for our nation, for our young people and for what God's doing in New Zealand. And it's just so exciting um, to see what you guys are doing. And um, we're just really grateful for, for you inviting us tonight. And so um, on behalf of myself and my husband, Phil, and the rest of the team, we want to say a huge thank you to you. Um, we, as um, Corey said, uh, run a ministry called JH Aotearoa. Um, this is a high impact intentional program that's been developed over 30 years in the USA at a place called JH Ranch. And uh, we have then taken that program, adapted it to our New Zealand context and um, run it here in New Zealand for the last um, eight years. The program is founded on prayer and that's why we're so excited to have you guys um, joining in and praying with us about it tonight. Um, it also uses experiential learning and adventure activities and an undistracted environment uh, to connect teenagers with their parents and also with God. Um, so basically, the ministry is all about deepening and strengthening relationships between parents um, and their teenagers and between um, both the parents and the children and God. And it gives an opportunity and an environment where parents can pass their values and their faith onto their children. So pretty much what we do is it's a, a week-long program, which we run just out of um, Rotorua. And what happens is one teenager and one parent come and they spend that week um, going through this program where they do adventure activities and then um, in the evening they have um, talks and speaking and they have intentional times of connecting with one another where they work through a workbook and ask one another questions, talk about difficult topics that teenagers are facing. So we cover things like um, technology and uh, dating relationships, um, substance abuse, and um, just generally that whole communication between parents and children. It's like sitting down and talking about how are we going to deal with conflict in our home? What are, what are we going to do when we disagree about things? And just laying that foundation of really being able to deeply share with one another and also just understand each other and um, create a deeper respect and, and love for one another. And it's just what we've seen happen um, over the, the eight years that it's been running has been absolutely incredible. We have just seen the most amazing miracles happen in people's lives. Um, we have seen incredible reconciliations happen between parents and teenagers. We've had um, teenagers come to the event who had not spoken to a parent for seven years and be reconnected with them, reunited, and just have a full reconciliation happen. happen. Um, we get quite a lot of um, um, broken family situations that come, um, but we also get lots of just wonderful Christian families who want to just deepen and strengthen that relationship with their children and, and pass their faith on in a deeper way. Um, so it really is a ministry of, of reconciliation, a ministry to families, and in particular, a minister to the young people of this nation. Um, and what we've seen is, is really lasting impact from their time at JH Aotearoa. I'm, I'm meeting families that did the program five years ago that said, that, that you know I'll bump into and they'll say that this has changed our lives this has changed our family dynamics it's changed the life um, of the teenager and just um, their walk with God um, I think a big bit is that through the program um, people have an opportunity to experience healing and forgiveness and that's a large part of of the program is um yeah, people experiencing that. Um, in addition to the parents and children who come, so we normally have about um, between 160 and 190 parents and children attend the event. We then have about 100 to 130 volunteers who come to help. 
and they're an incredible team, the volunteers. Um, the volunteers are both um, university age students and then um, some mums and dads as well who come and, and volunteer. And it's kind of a, almost a two-prong program. The volunteers are also really ministered to and they grow and learn so much from ministering to the parents and teens as well. Um, so there's kind of two sides to, um, to the ministry. So, um, yeah, um, Chris, can I ask, is there anything that you'd like to add to that? Or if there's any questions that anybody has um, as to, yeah, if I've kind of clarified stuff um, enough. Um, I guess the thing that's been really exciting is just seeing the... Um, amount of um, both teenagers and parents who've given their hearts to the Lord through this program and um, um, the uh, sometimes we'll have teenagers who go to youth group and mum and dad are not Christians they bring their parent convince their parents to come and do this week of adventure activities with them and the parents give their hearts to the Lord or vice versa um, the parents um, are Christians, but the teenagers are rebelling and not walking with the Lord, and they come and have this week with their parents and end up giving their hearts to the Lord. Um, I see somebody just asked a question there as to um, uh, what the JH stands for. Actually, the JH has no particular meaning. It's just the name of the ranch where the program first developed in America, and we just keep the JH to identify it with the American program, which is um, happens um, in a, a number of places in America and other places throughout the world. So it doesn't have a particular meaning. Um, sorry, I just missed another question that flicked up there. Um, I think it was what happens to the other teenagers. We, we just do the one week of focusing on one teenager. Um, then what happens is family might come back the next year with a different teenager, or perhaps both mum and dad come with a teenager each. So it's just we find the one-on-one -on -one is really beneficial. Um, Desiree, I could answer the next question. Yes. Um, so um, there are a couple of questions. Uh, how many times a year do you run? At this moment in time, we run two programs concurrently. So there is a teenage program which we're running called Second Wind. So for those young people who've been through a program with their parents, uh, they can return. And uh, this is re really a program um, uh, aimed at uh, then those who are uh, later in their schooling, um, heading toward uh, you know, vocational training or university. And it's really to help them to take personal responsibility for their faith. That's called Second Wind. Um, so those teenagers do come alone. However, the, the JH parent-child program is that. It's a parent-child program. But I thought if you've got a, if there's a couple, two parents, you can, yes, uh, both parents um, can bring a child each, but you are only bringing one child as a parent. Um, so I'll just tell you a little, little bit of my personal story, just very quick. I came as a dad. So I went with a son who was 12 going 13. I had, he was number one. And, and I grew up, I'm a multi-generational Christian um, in my family. Um, however, just as we were heading into these teenage years, I was just noticing the interactions between the two of us were strained at times. We had this time in the US, we went up to the US, um, and we had the seven day together. Um, the fact that he was with me and there was no further distractions spoke volumes to him as we traveled together. We then obviously uh, uh, we're, we're going to attend this event. Um, and he knew that dad was taking this time off because he mattered. So that started a process for him of readjusting perhaps a misunderstanding that I had given him, then we, we ended up coming into this beautiful environment. We were hosted in amazingly well. Um, and, and so me as a father, I was able to relax. 
but then we then started and engaged with this highly intentional program which helped turn each other toward each other but in a safe way and in a way that we were able to to do it in a way that our hearts were able to do unbeknown to me at the time there was an intercessory team that had really covered the whole environment in prayer and so what I started to notice um, as, as a Christian is a sense of the presence of God just was, I noticed it around me. By day three, we had had this most, Henry and I had had this most, I often tear up just actually remembering the moment, but we had this most life-changing turning toward each other where he forgave me. Uh, for something which I had done, uh, which is um, through my temperament and his temperament clashes, I'd driven anger. And him to, to start to have a pattern of anger. He forgave me. We returned to New Zealand and our family has never been the same. Lord, The Lord did something. And so JH for us is, is first of all, we prioritize the presence of God, which is done through prayer. It's a highly intentional program in a, in a through delivered by a people who are carrying the presence of God and who know the Lord and in an undistracted place and environment. So I hope that sort of just sort of fleshes out sort of my, that was just my experience. I was this dad. And so now all us volunteers and, and, and I'm a trustee, we're captured by the fact that the Lord's used this vehicle to touch a relationship which up until that point I was struggling to fix. I needed the scaffolding of something else. I needed community. I needed to be amongst and he needed, you know, and so that's what JH seeks to do. At this point in time, it's only once a year we've got this kind of challenge with our summer period and holidays and things like that. So I hope that answers some further questions and, and sort of enriches the picture too for you. Just with regard to uh, prayer requests, the, the verse on which this ministry is founded is Malachi uh, 4 6 about the Lord turning the hearts of the fathers to their children and the children to their fathers. And so that's something I'd love to ask you to pray into for the mums and dads and sons and daughters who are coming along this year in January. Because it's only the Lord that can do that. You know, you can set up an amazing environment, but it is only the Lord and the, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit that brings that about. Um, so I would just love you to pray into that tonight. Um, I'd love you to pray for mums and dads, sons and daughters who come who are not Christians, who throughout this week get to that point where they desire to give their hearts to the Lord and, and um, commit their lives to him. And also to pray for those who are already Christians who, who maybe have stepped back a bit in their faith. And we certainly see this every year, just so many of them who make a recommitment. And we also um, encourage them as part of the program. It's about them learning to spend a daily time with the Lord, reading the reading his word and praying and journaling and and that's a habit that we encourage them to um, form and that's one of the things that's life-changing about the program mums and dads sons and daughters take that learning back home and put it into practice for a six-week period to establish that habit and then continue it for years and years and it and it really is um, transformative um, so yeah just the other bit is for revelation reconciliation forgiveness and healing for those families that um there's division there's hurt there's offense um so yeah just that the lord would would intervene and bring that healing that families would be restored and lives would be transformed um the other thing we just love prayer over is for safety for the adventure activities um so that's a big uh factor for us um and at the moment, um, we've got quite a few families who've sort of an expressed an interest in coming to JH, but haven't been able to quite commit to getting there. So I would love us to pray for those families who, for various reasons, have not committed to coming yet. For some of them, it's because of obstacles such as getting time off work or family, other family commitments, um, finances, 
or for some of them, even just apprehension and fear that they're just fearful of stepping into this week. Um, so yeah, just that the Lord would overcome those obstacles and release those families to come that he would want to be there. Um, the other thing we'd love prayer for is the hundred plus volunteers who come, uh, that God would equip them and bless them and use them mightily to, to minister to the families who come. Um, and the final thing is just that God would inspire more people to provide funds for scholarships so that those families who can't afford to come uh, would be able to. So actually, the majority of our families who come, come on some form of scholarship. And um, it's been incredible to see the way the Lord has just provided year after year. Well, so many times it's been such a journey of faith for myself, my husband, Phil, and Chris, and the rest of the team, as we've gone, Lord, there's these families who want to come. We don't have the funds. Would you provide? And it's been amazing to see the way the Lord has done that. Um, I, Chris, is there anything I've missed out there that you think we should be covering in prayer? Okay, so we've just got one further need, which occurred uh, last oh. week. We had our full catering team. Uh, they were, you might have read in the paper, but there was a, a big accident in the Waterview Tunnel. And so um, our lead chef and uh, three of their team uh, are now, well, the lead chef's been fighting for his life in ICU in Auckland Hospital. So we've got now a gap and, and, and it's, it's easy to find people who can do bulk food, but, but we, we, we seek to have a special experience um, and food's a very big part of that. And um, so we're now, we've got a gap. Um, we're, we're, we're seeking answers, um, but look, if we pray for that need, that's, um, that's there. Um, um, I'm just yeah. conscious we we're coming up to 8 30 we were going to the breakout room so in, in a moment we will we will um, get Chris to pray um, but I do just want to say if anybody if you know of anybody who you think may benefit from this program please encourage them to um, to check it out if you go to jh.org.nz or jhaotearoa you'll see the website there and um, please don't let a lack of um, financial means discourage them from coming encourage them to just apply and apply for a scholarship if, if um, they feel it's the right thing for them to do with their child. Um, so, yeah.